I've taken my family to Williamsburg, Virginia, which is a colonial town where everybody there is dressed up in period costumes and doing all of the work and the living just like they did back in the revolutionary times. And I've taken them twice. And the first time I went, I was super excited and it was a really good experience. But when I got there, I thought I'm just going to get to the visitor center and I'm sure they'll give me a map or somebody will tell me what to do. Basically, somebody will guide me through this experience and it will be really great. And I got there and they said, okay, well you get on the bus and the bus takes you to the different stops. And I thought, well, the bus must be the key to it all. And so I get on the bus and it takes us to the first place and it was a palace and it was amazing. And there was a maze of plants grown up around. And so they actually had a life-size maze, which the kids loved. And that was amazing. And we did that. And then we got on the bus and it took us to the next stop and we got off the bus and there was nothing there. And I didn't know what it was all about or what the big deal was. And I, okay, so it's kind of cool. There was a restaurant nearby, but we weren't really hungry. So I thought, I guess that's it. And then we went to the museums, which were okay. It was COVID, so everything was closed. So it wasn't really that cool, but I had a good time, but it wasn't really, <laughs> that amazing, especially because the second time I went, I did a little bit of research. And what I discovered is 99% of Williamsburg is in this stretch of several blocks where there are no cars allowed because they have horses and carriages and they have people walking all over the roads and they're cobbled streets and they're just amazing. And you can't get there by the bus. So the bus actually drops you off about one block from where you need to be. And it's not far, you can walk there, but I didn't know that. And so I didn't actually ever get to the part that was super cool. And so my first advice when it comes to Williamsburg and probably any field trip ever, have a plan, know what your options are and know going in that you're going to probably get a lot more out of it if you know what you're trying to aim for. <laughs> so I'm a little bit embarrassed that we put in that much effort and got so little out of it the first time. But the second time we went, oh my goodness, I had such a plan. I knew exactly where we were going. I knew exactly what we were going to do. And I discovered they have this amazing app where you can go in and select the things that you want to accomplish. It puts them up on a map for you. And then you can just say, oh, that one's really close. That one's right across the street. I can see physically where I am in proximity to that next thing. So I just want to run you through first off why Williamsburg is absolutely worth the visit. It is so much fun. And the second, how to do it so you can get the most out of it. So here's our experience. We got there and we went to listen to Thomas Jefferson and he came up on the stage and he stands there for a second and he goes, that's okay. I don't need any applause. And all of us were like, oh, our bad. And so we started clapping. He's like, yeah, no, you missed it too late. I'm out. And I just thought, oh my gosh, Thomas Jefferson with an attitude. That is hilarious. And he really interacted with the audience so well. This new American experiment, that is we are turning the entire government over to whom? Oh. The people. Well, the white men. Well, the white men. Yes. <laughs> so says the white woman. <laughs> And he brought him to life so well that my husband, as we were walking away, he was like, it was worth it. The whole trip was worth it just to listen to this one guy speak. It was so, so good. And we just continued throughout the entire day having that same experience. All these people with all of their personalities um, acting as characters from so long ago. I honestly feel like I can't say enough good about this place because the actors are, um, they're really good that they stay in character in so far as they're going to tell you about, this is the printing press and we're going to show you how they actually did the printing, but they're not so much in character that they can't talk about then versus today. You know, they're, they're not pretending like they've never heard of the modern day. So you're able to say, well, how does that compare with how we make newspapers today? And you know, how much, how much would that cost today? And they were able to make those comparisons and they'll talk to you about that as well. So it is an immersive experience experience without being awkward. It still brings that ability to say, we know that we all live in the modern days and we're able to talk about how it relates to today as well as how cool it was back in that day. One of the guys, well, this was only took like two seconds of the day, but it just cracked me up so much. He's walking across the street and he just belts out and starts singing 
an old world spiritual. And I was like my first reaction, seriously, I kind of grabbed my kids and pulled them away. I was like, everybody okay? We're all okay. That guy's a little weird. And then I thought, oh, he's an actor. <laughs> and he's actually pretending to be a preacher from back then. He had that big black hat on and his black outfit and he's just singing out. And I just thought, this is the coolest experience ever having this really immersive opportunity. Okay, so that part is really, really cool. The next part that is so fascinating is that you get to get into each of the um, crafts that people do. So we're talking about silver working, um, blacksmithing, uh, firing the guns. They, the guy got out and he got this huge gun and he fired it for us. And actually my husband was filming it and it got so hot outside that the camera died just a couple of seconds before he shot because it was just too hot. But it was very loud. It was very exciting to be able to see all of this stuff up close and be able to interact with it. They had a brick kiln where they actually in earlier in the year, they would shape the bricks. And then as the year went on, they stuck them all in a, an enclosed space. And then as we were going at the end of the summer, they're getting ready to burn them. So they actually created a kiln out of the bricks themselves and they were going to light them. And this is not theory they were doing it. They were actually building these bricks and they were using those bricks to create some of the structures that were taking place on the campus of Williamsburg. And the same thing with the wheelwrights. They were fixing the wheels for the different carriages that went around Williamsburg during the day. So in a lot of ways, they're a very self-sufficient economy, which is super fascinating. Now, not every one of the crafts or the options are open every single day. So this is part of why you need to have a plan. If you will know which date and which day you're going to be there, they have this page where it just lists all the different options that are available on all the different days of the week and all the different special things that take place on specific dates. And you can look at those and say, oh, I really wanna make sure that I'm there for jewelry making or I'm super excited about leather working. And those are only open a couple of days during the week. So if there's one that you really wanna make sure that you get to, just check it out and see which days that one is open and make sure you're going on one of those days. Now I will say both times I've gone have been one day gigs. We've just been there, got there in the morning, and then we were done by five o'clock in the evening. If you are just walking up and down the street, you won't be able to get to everything, but probably you'll be able to get to everything you're interested in in one day. If you want to have a special tour, they do you know wagon rides and different tours and at during time, different times of the year, they'll have different emphases that they'll do and they'll spend a couple hours doing that. Uh, you're gonna need two days if you wanna accomplish all of that. But if you just wanna do a, a cursory, I wanna see all the cool things that are open on any specific day, one day is probably sufficient for that. The only other tricky part about doing this is that some things are timed and other things are not timed, but that's not really that hard. All you do is you go into the app, you say, I wanna hit this, you know, I, James Madison is going to be speaking at two o'clock. So I want to know that that's coming up and your app will pop up and it'll say, hey, it's almost two o'clock and he's speaking, you know, a block this direction. You might wanna be moving in that direction. Um, and then just fill in all the untimed things between there. And so what you do is you walk in to each of these, um, artisans or craftsmen's areas and they're there and they'll give you kind of a starting off point where they will say, hey, this is some background to what it takes to be a wheelwright. There was one guy who did harpsichords and also he made um, furniture, which I thought was so hilarious. I was like, why do you do harpsichords and furniture and he said oh it's because the owner of this company of this building originally in the 1700s did harpsichords and furniture and we are just doing what he did i thought oh wow it wasn't just some sort of random idea they're actually still carrying on what he this one particular individual did in this one place and so that wasn't standard but it's what happened in that building and so they continue doing that till today so they will kind of give you a background of who they are and what they're doing. And then they just open it up and say, what are you interested? What do you want to see? And it was really awesome being in the blacksmiths. My um, 15 year old loved the blacksmith. He just loved watching the sparks fly and the, the way that all of it works. You know, we talk about a lot of different stuff, but words don't always make a nice picture for them. Even if you've seen a video about it, it doesn't always make sense because they've never had any real life experience with this because you know seriously who has a blacksmith and you just you don't have that in our life anymore but he got to go in and watch that he loved it it was so much fun for him to watch them actually 
put together something with metal and talk about all the different types of smelting that took place and all the different tools that they use. It was really, really fascinating. They also have an animals area, which was my daughter's absolute favorite. She just loved standing there and petting the horses and being with them. I don't know that that was really a major part of Williamsburg so much as it was like, we have horses and they're here and sure you can come say hi to them, but it was a high point for my daughter because she just loves animals. And so it was such a, a big thing for her to be able to be there with the horses. And like I mentioned before, behind the palace, they have this real life-size maze, which is bar none, my 12-year-old and my seven-year-old's absolute favorite. They had so much fun running around there, having friends um, come with them, uh, making new friends, getting lost in the maze, finding new ways through the maze. They loved that so much. It was, it was the favorite memory from the first time we went because it's kind of all we did, but it was also their favorite memory from the second time as well. And it's not really listed as a big deal on the app or anything. So just be aware, that's behind the palace. And it's so much fun. Take time to do that. So this whole experience is self-directed, it's self-timed. You get to decide which ones you go to, how long you stay there. Other than the actors getting up and giving their presentations, things were generally not timed. They were just, you go at your own pace. I will say you need to be very aware that it is hot almost all the time. You are going to want water, water, water. And they do have, they have one place that we could replenish our water. So, I mean, they had some water there, but you wanna carry your own water bottles. The other thing that I really wish I had known the first time is that you should bring your own food. That there are some places where they sell food, although um, as we were there that last time, they were telling us they haven't been able to find people to work inside the restaurants, the economy, and it's just a real thing. And so even if I wanted to buy food from those restaurants, it wasn't really available. We just brought our own food. We put it in a backpack. It wasn't very heavy. Um, the water weighed a little bit, but so worth it because you're really gonna want water. Um, you will definitely want sunscreen. It's hot, uh, hats are a good idea, and you're going to be on your feet. <laughs> so within 20 minutes of being there, I knew I had a hot spot and I could feel that I was starting to uh, get a blister forming on my heel. But I was having so much fun that I was like, it's worth it, even if it pops, you know, I'm just gonna have to make it through this, it'll be okay. Uh, it would have worked better had I not done that. So here's a trick if you've never been a scout before, take some duct tape and just stick it on your heel and that your heel will then slide inside your sock and you won't get any hot spots or any blisters. If you do it after you have a hot spot though, it will probably just rip the blister off. So that's not as awesome, but it's something that you can do to protect yourself um, from blisters if that's something that your shoes are probably going to give you. And you will be on your feet for a long, long time. They do have some uh, benches along the way, but you're just going to be up and moving around for, you know, the eight or 10 hours, however long we were there, I don't remember. You're just moving, moving, moving on your feet the whole time. So just be aware of that. That may be a problem. Maybe it's not a problem. You just have to know that's going to be an issue. Both times that we have gone have been during the homeschool days. And so they have some focus there on uh, different things for kids. I don't know that they have that all throughout the year, but when we were there, they had games, the games that kids would play. And so they had in front of the tavern, all these little games set up that the kids could come and play the different types of games that they that were played by kids in that olden days and so they were able to enjoy that they also had one where they taught the kids manners and they taught them dancing and that was very much focused on the children and I'm not sure that they always have that but the homeschool days does offer that opportunity and I'm sure they have other deals that they run throughout the year but it is a really great deal financially to go during homeschool days because it's it's like 50% off or something I don't know it was a really great deal I was really pleased to see how much we got off on that. But I think it would be a great deal even if you don't go during homeschool days. It was a lot of fun. So if you're checking out Williamsburg and you want to know if it's worth it, yeah, 100%. It is totally worth it. It is a lot of fun. Little kids don't love it as much because it's hot and there's a lot of walking and um, they may not understand what it is that they're seeing with all the different craftsmen. But I would say five years old and up, absolutely awesome. They really, really loved it. It was just a lot of fun. They had different things that they loved. So not all of my kids loved all of the things, but all of my kids loved something from it. And they were all really, really pleased with the experience. I hope you have a great time. I hope that if you choose to go to Williamsburg, that it is a really good experience for you. Being a mom matters and you are doing a much better job than you think you are. Thank you. Bye.